It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with BG and Ken. All right, true believers, welcome into episode 135 of the border war. This is BG. I'm joined in studio to my left, which is about the only time he'll be over there. You almost said right. I did almost say right because you right. say right every week, and I forgot that I was me and you were you. By the Tan Man, you can follow him on Twitter at Tar Heel Tan Man. You can follow me at BG underscore Border War, and you can follow the show at The Border War on Twitter. Most of you like following the show, not so much us. That's fine. Hmm. That's fine. There is a difference between us and the show. The show tends to be a little more conservative in its retweets and tweets. Tan Man and myself, not so much. I will retweet anything of a controversial nature. We uh, we are available on many, many platforms. You can listen to us on Spreaker, which we are broadcasting on live right now. You can listen to us on Spotify. You can listen to us on iHeartRadio. You can listen to us on the TuneIn app. You can listen to us on Apple Podcast. Did I miss anything? Google Podcast. Google Podcast. We're on YouTube. All the podcasts. All, all the podcast things. I just Wait. got a call from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. And you know for a fact that wasn't Distrito a Distrito Nacional. I figure like that back when we could see locations, we used huh. to have a lot of listeners in Santo Domingo. It was probably a, probably a disgruntled Colts well, fan. Well, I say it's probably a fan of the show that wants to know why he can't listen to the show on Meredix anymore. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Um, all right, Tam, man. This week uh, we are going to break uh, football talk into two episodes. So we're this this episode one thirty five. We're going to talk NFL. We're going to stay in our box, man. We're going to talk Cowboys Giants. We're going to talk Redskins Eagles, and we're going to talk Panthers Rams. And we'll do our five NFL picks at the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, we will do better at our NFL picks this week than we did last week. We did. Horrible last And to be fair, man, like I missed Horrible. the days when we just picked who was going to win the game because I'm not even all that interested in the spread. But the, I'll, I'll tell you what happened this week, though, and you know this, man. There were a lot of trash touchdowns. We were right about a bunch of games, and then basically what we said would happen happened, and then there's a trash touchdown that blows the spread at the end of the game. Um, anyway. Uh, so Maybe with the Redskins one. I think the rest of them we just got pounded. Well, well, let's, let's, Panthers. Yeah, and I thought the Giants would hang in there against Dallas. Yeah. I, really, I, I did. Um, but let's start off with just kind of general impressions about week one. Um, give, me, give me something that stood out to you outside the box before we get into our, into our lane. Well, I, obviously the Antonio Brown stuff is a given. I don't think anybody saw yeah, that Yeah, we haven't coming. had a show since all that. I, I don't think anybody saw that coming. Uh, I think Bill Belichick I, saw that coming. Mm, so you're you're in on that. I don't see how you couldn't be. I that I mean, you know me, man. Right? You're the conspiracy guy. Right? I'm always the one yeah. saying, no, nah, I don't think so. That is the first thing that popped into my head when that went you know, down. I had a buddy, you know, on our on our group text, my buddy Jonathan, uh, when all that started going down, where he asked for his release. It's before he got released, he said he's going to the Patriots. He said that that morning before he was actually released. Yeah, nailed it, man. And and, and, and he went he went eligible free agent at four p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? And the Patriots, the tweet from Schefter came out. I mean, it was like four fifty three. He wasn't he wasn't a free agent for an hour. Jeez. I mean, they didn't even really hide it. Jeez. He's living with Tom Brady. <laughs> what you didn't know that? He's I saw somewhere with Brady, Brady said he could he come stay house. with him. That's, yeah, no, he, apparently he is. That's what they said on Mike and not Mike. That's insane. Now, I, my to me, I, I just want to apologize to the Jacksonville Jaguars fans. Uh, apparently, the tan man kiss of death rolls on. I picked Jacksonville to win the AFC South last week in our prediction episode, and Nick Foles lasts about a quarter before he gets slammed to the ground. Suffers a, that 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 injury should forever be known as the Tony Romo injury. Not, yeah, not like like the Tommy Johnson. That should be the Tony Romo injury. 
he suffers the rumbo injury, broken collarbone, clavicle, whatever the uh, official term is, and Nick Foles is done for the foreseeable future. So is the Jaguars that season. That foreseeable future might be longer than he thinks. Uh, but to me, I, I take away two things. They're both butt kickings. One is the Cleveland Browns. Uh, oh, look. I just didn't look ready to play. Just did not look ready to play. It and looked then, like, you know what it reminded me of? It looked like a, a basketball team of assembled stars, right, hmm? that have not played together, have no chemistry, because um, they did not play in the preseason, none of those guys. Um, and they kind of acted like they could just sort of cut, paste, insert players out there. And, and for the most part in football, you can, but but they could not. Uh, they, they were just off. Between, uh, between Cleveland being off like they were, between Pittsburgh just getting boat raced on national TV last night, and the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson – well, I think at one point he had four touchdown passes on nine throws. BG, it looks like we just completely butchered the uh, the a- AFC North. Yeah, that was um, awful. Yeah, I I think without talking about the obvious things, I mean everybody's got the same impression of the Patriots uh, as far as how good they are that we do. So there's not a lot of reason to go into all that. Um, I'm going to go with the Tennessee Titans, man. I I, I had this feeling that it was kind of their turn to time to step up. Now, Marcus Mariota and the offense didn't look great. Um, Derrick Henry had a big day. But their defense, uh, I just think Vrabel has those guys locked into the way he played football now. And I think they're going to – I don't think they're going to have a great season. I think they do have a chance to win that division. Um, but I think that uh, they're going to be competitive. I mean, they're going to they're gonna play close football games with a lot of different teams. And, and I don't see – you know, the, the Colts or the, the, the Texans or any of those teams being head and shoulders above them, and I think they've got some winnable games in that division. You might be right. Look, uh, you know, with with Foles down in Jacksonville, Andrew Luck retiring, the Texans have some issues going on. Like, I think any one of those three teams that are left Absolutely. outside of Jacksonville, you throw them in a hat, and, you know, it wouldn't be shocking to see either, any of them. Win that division. I, I would agree. Um, the only other thing that I took away, and I texted you about it, um, the Red Zone Channel broadcast yesterday was awful. It was awful. Half the time they were showing that Buffalo Jets game. I'm like, what? what, what is this, man? I get that the Jets were kind of a compelling storyline. We want to see what they look like. Okay, that, that's fine. Well, but, I mean, man, uh, I mean, lots and lots of broadcasts of replays of – Dead time of guys standing on the sideline hurt. Do you see the? Do you see the nice, uh, nice little Tyreek Hill when he comes walking off the freaking field, man? After he gets hurt, he's walking up the trainer. To a, 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 a middle aged trainer has the nerve to approach him. I guess put his hand on his shoulder and he swats at the guy. Don't touch Tyreek Hill, man. Well, I Listen, mean, you he know can what? touch you, but don't touch him. I, I, you know what? I'd have been fine just letting him bleed to death. Don't get me wrong, man. I, I I don't say this about it anyway. I hope that dude has nine broken ribs and doesn't come back this season. That's fine Whoa. with me. It's pretty harsh. Well, you know what? So is breaking the arm of a child. Hmm. Well, I guess I will take the Tyreek Hill jersey I got you for Christmas back. I guess you better. I guess so. Uh, Maybe I'll replace it with a Dak Prescott jersey instead, BG, because if you missed the I Cowboys do, I game I do like Sunday, a good barbecue. Uh, well, I, I don't know what that's supposed to be. I would, I would start the fire with the jersey, you see. I would burn it. Burn it with fire. i tell you what, uh, I don't know what kind of day you've had, but you're in kind of a mood this afternoon. Kind of rude. It's going to get worse. Uh, well... You are a Redskins fan and a South Carolina fan, so we'll talk about that later. We will. Uh, Dak Prescott. I, this is a stat that I found amazing. Roger Staubach, uh-huh. Tony, Troy Eggman, Tony Romo. All these. This is only the second time in Cowboys history that a Dallas quarterback has had a perfect quarterback rating, and the other time was none of those other three guys. Dak Prescott uh, was amazing Sunday afternoon, 25 for 32, 405, four touchdowns. BG, uh, a friend of mine talked the other night. Yesterday said, is the first time ever that it's happened twice in the same day. Who else had one? Lamar Jackson. Oh, okay. Uh, buddy of mine, How is the perfect score point three? <laughs> Don't we need to rework something when point three is perfect? Well, I was going to say. Like, well, what, well, shouldn't well, it be a zero well, or a five? Well, what gets me is sometimes uh, you know, 
a guy will come in and be like nine for nine, and his quarterback rated about two hundred twelve. Well, how was that better than? I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I, I said in a conversation with a friend of mine the other day talking about the game coming up. And I said, look, I said he's got a you know, the ball's in his court now. You know, you've got the cojones to go in there and send your agent in and say, I want forty million dollars. Look, the time for the time for talking is over. I mean, oh, it's yeah, time yeah, for yeah, it's yeah, time yeah. for him to show up. If he up wants and play, the money, he and, can just tell him I'll sit for a game. And by golly, he <clears> went out there and played like a man who asked for forty million dollars. Yeah, no, yeah, look, man, you got to give him props because uh, you know he's betting on himself. He he put himself in a situation where a lot of a lot of Dallas fans, you included, were sort of like, "You want what?" Who do you think you are, man? You're Dak Prescott. You're not. You're not Peyton Manning. All and right? now I'm running around going, "Somebody cut this man a check." What are we doing here? Um, so yeah, no, I think it takes a lot of uh, a lot of courage to go out there and play the way he played because to throw for that kind of yardage, man, you got to take some risks with the football that could have backfired. You know, before you throw the ball, if you're playing conservatively, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, yeah, you 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 aren't going to put up those kind of numbers. Um, look, it, it's this is going to sound similar to what I'm going to end up saying in episode 136 about South Carolina. You do have to take in consideration the opponent, but when you put up those kind of numbers against anybody, that, I was going to say that's that's against nice. anybody, then you have to tip your hat and say, "Manny Hell, a hell of a day." Um, I, that being said, uh, the Giants—they're just worse than I thought they were. They're worse than I thought they were. I, I definitely don't think the Redskins are the worst team in that division. Um, I, I, I think they looked, I mean, just as unimaginative offensively as, I, as I've, I've seen an NFL team look in this era in forever. And I really wonder there, like, what what's the scenario there now? Now, it, it, with – they did give Jones some snaps in the fourth quarter, which I was surprised they that they did that. Look, uh, I, but you, it's going to get awkward up there in a hurry. I, well, I think Daniel Jones eventually winds up your starting quarterback this season. This season, okay. At some point, anyway, okay. just because you, know, you saw as soon as this thing was done, they got him in there, and I think they're going to continue to do that. And you think there's a chance Eli, for example, maybe gets <laughs> traded before the season's over? No. You think he just sits? I think he. Okay. Just, I think he just stays. And then, okay. As soon as you know, as soon as the season is effectively over, and we're not playing for the playoffs anymore, the Giants will go to Daniel Jones. With that said, uh, on New York side, look, you've got to get Saquon Barkley more than eleven carries. No question. This is one of, if not the best, he's certainly one of the two or three best running backs in football. He had 120 yards. You got to get him more carries than that. Um, but other than, other than that, I don't think this was a Giants problem. I think this was a Dallas Cowboys is really good well, issue. And, 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 I, and I agree with you, but you got to admit that you, you guys had the ball a lot. Well, listen, here we go. They scored a, a you know, I think they put it on the first possession. After that, they scored touchdowns on five straight possessions, spanning into the first half, into the second half, drives of 11 plays, 9 plays, 13 plays. The yardage on this is what is what really gets you. Drives of 75, 93, 83, 75, and 89. Sure. Those are our touchdown drives on those five straight possessions. This was not a, oh, the Giants are terrible. That now This was the Dallas Cowboys really might be the real deal. Well, I think both of those things could be true because I think there, there's a chance that this Giants team is 2-12 and 12 at the end of the season. I mean, I, 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 I could see them – Losing a whole bunch of games now. See, I just think it's, I just think you have. Say, I just think well, you got Saquon Barkley. I think I think Saquon Barkley by himself is going to keep you from being three and thirteen. Well, I was going to say it's it's overreaction Monday. I mean, yeah. this is what we do, and it's also the week. first week. It's the first week. Um, so yeah, take it with a grain of salt. We'll probably be sitting here next week with one of these three teams in our box saying, "Oh boy, what was that? Either good or bad." Probably, I mean, it, it probably happens. us. But uh, the other thing I. I think uh, I doubt it. I've looked at your schedule. <laughs> uh, a great job by Kellen Moore. I thought the new offensive coordinator that I, I was a little bit eh, about because this guy was your backup quarterback two years ago, and now all of a sudden he's your offensive coordinator, and you got Super Bowl hopes. How is this going to work? Well, well, I'll tell you. I this. think it worked out pretty well. I hope that either combination of uh, uh, because it wasn't just the play calling. 
I love the motion before the plays. I love the disguising the plays. I love the creativity that that Moore's play calling showed. It did not look like the same offense as last year, which we thought yeah. that it, it would just be, you know, he's an in-house guy. Let's just kind of keep it rolling. No, it, it reminded me, honestly, of what we saw from, from Nagy last season, week one with the Bears, mm-hmm. where we were just like, whoa, what is this? But I'll tell you this, I hope that either uh, uh, Bruce Allen or and Ray Tanner is going to be on the phone with that dude shortly just to ask, yeah. what are your long-term plans, man? Because that guy's going to be a head coach, and it's going to be soon. Well, his long-term plan is to stay in Dallas and be our offensive coordinator. I don't know. He looks awfully opinionated. I don't know <laughs> if he can be your head coach. Man. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, I haven't last. seen his clap. I haven't seen his clapping for him. I'm not sure if he's up for the ch- – okay. Oh, man. I, I am so torn on all of this. You, you know can't what? Even, you, I can't even explain. Well, you know what? It, it's only 5% of the rage I'm feeling right now. Uh, so, like, we'll but, get to uh, that in a second. You know, Dak Prescott, this time last year, the whole first half of the season, we're wondering, you know, man, what is this guy doing? He seems like he can't break 150 yards. Kellen Moore seems to have breathed some life into him. Uh, a nice even split on the run pass. Yeah, they kind of, I don't say bottled up, but they eased Ezekiel Elliott in. There were some questions about his workload. Uh, he and Tony Pollard, an even 13 carry split. Not even on production wise, but BG, my question to you before we close the door on the Cowboys for the week. Uh, Actually, two questions. One, do you think that the real deck, the new deck, is closer to this guy? And two, uh, how quickly and how much pressure, in your opinion, is on Jerry Jones to get this deal done sooner rather than later? I'm just going to cop out on the first question. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's still a pretty big sample size. I mean, that that he is a, I don't know, I don't know what his career numbers are. I'm going to guess he's about a 275-yard-a-guy game mm-hmm. up until now. Um, there's a chance that I mean, obviously, he's not going to do this every week. No, he's not going to do he's this. He's not going to do week. this every week. But could he um, be a 300 yard guy every week? But yeah, I know. I definitely think that's that's possible. But but week. typically speaking, um, what year is he in now? Four. This will be year four. Year four. I mean, I, I would have to go back and look, but my guess is guys are usually who they are before year four. Um, but again, play calling. All of that matters. Say, new voices in All the room. All of that man. matters. So we, we will definitely see within the next three weeks kind of how Dak and that offense levels out. And I mean, you know, Zeke's gonna he's gonna step up more in that offense too. I mean, he didn't get the full dose. No, you didn't get the full Zeke. Sunday. Um, as per both of our fantasy teams, I think we we realized that. And somehow you um, won both of those games. Not I, yet. Uh, not yet. Uh, not yet. Uh, Doubleheader on Monday night. Uh, Drew Brees could go off for 900 yards. You never know. Um, but, yeah, I just don't know. As for the second question, absolutely he's under pressure. Um, but I don't know what kind of relationship he and Dak have. I don't know if it's kind of like, look, Dak, I'm going to pay you, but just get let us work it out. Or And Dak's like trusting, like, okay, man. Or if it's one of those things where Dak might be like, look, you pay me or See, y'all can like, go up to play the Redskins without me. See, I, I don't think it's that extreme. Or, what, or to what extreme it is in I, I feel those. like Dak Prescott has, has played the good soldier role I agree with that. long enough. I agree with that. Uh, and the fact that you know, they just got Leo Collins' deal done, so now you've done Collins, you've done Jalen Smith. Uh, you, you, know, you I don't want to say caved, but you basically caved on the Ezekiel Elliott deal. And of all the guys still floating around out there that you haven't taken care of yet, it's your quarterback. I think that's not a you know, that's not a great look to me. I agree. Uh, so no, I, I think the pressure is the pressure is definitely on to get this deal done because if he is closer to this guy than the guy we saw this time last year every week, like that price tag is going to go up. Every week. So you better lock him in now. Otherwise, you really might be paying the $40 million a year. Yeah. And I don't think that's I don't think that's a number that anybody wants to touch. Uh, moving on to the uh, Washington Redskins now, BG. Uh, you guys, I thought you guys were going to pull maybe the stunner of the weekend there for a while. I did not. And uh, then things kind of fell apart. What happened? The same thing that always happens. Um I, I wish there were a way to easily go back and look at last season's games and see how many times we lost games that at some point in the game we had a double-digit lead. I, I, I would hazard to guess it was at least six. Um, 
here's what happens. All right, Doug Peterson is is no lightweight of a coach. No, he, he knows what he's doing. He knows there. what he's doing. He went into halftime, and he made adjustments. And Jay Gruden didn't. We got conservative. We played to not lose. And you could just see it coming. You could see Redskins Twitter exploding right after halftime. There were guys tweeting, there is no way we win this game. You can see it coming. How many times have we watched this? Um, And I, I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you this. And I've never said this before. I would fire him today. That would have been his last that, that's game. That's not a stance you take very young. You'll go, I think this ought to be his last year, but you don't take like the immediate that firing stance that very often. I would give one of the other guys on staff a chance till the end of the season. And if it was a train wreck, it would be a train wreck. But I would have watched this mess happen for the last time because I, we have lost seven or eight games in the past two seasons just exactly like this. And here's what's frustrating about it. To me, what this game showed is the Redskins roster is not deplete of talent. There is talent on that football team that can hang on the road with the Philadelphia Eagles, but our play calling is so unimaginative. We we don't have any of the movement you guys have before the snap. We don't disguise anything. When Jonathan Allen goes out with a sprained MCL in the first quarter, our entire defense falls apart. And to me in the second half, it looked like Peterson was throwing stuff at our defense that they simply had not been prepared for. Yeah. Period. I think much like you talked about uh, North Carolina over South Carolina last week being a coaching victory, that is absolutely what this was. Our guys were out there, hung out to dry, and 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 – Take Case Keenum for what he is. I still think Dwayne Haskins should have been starting from day one, but Case Keenum played a did well above average game, man. He, he more than he, did his part Sunday. You, you, and we had receivers step up, which is the big missing link. On our, how do you have Terry McLaurin get 107 yards receiving in the first half? It is clear he has speed to match anything that DJX throws at you, and then you don't target him in the second half. I, and, and here's the real damning thing, man. This is what it comes down to. Did you see Deshaun Jackson's comments after the game? He said, I went in that locker room and I told them, those dudes think this game's over. I promise you, they will not come out with any kind of effort in the second half. We've got this. Because he knows Gruden. He knows that locker room. He knows the culture that's been established there. And he was right. He was right. That... I, I don't know well, what the solution is, but Jay Gruden is not it. Well, look, I, he is not it. The second half, you guys went in twenty to seven with a halftime lead, really doing a good job. Case Keenum, like I said, more than did his part. Philadelphia comes out with a touchdown. You guys answer with a punt. They come back with another touchdown, another punt. Yes, another touchdown, another punt, and then a Philadelphia field goal. How is it that? How, yeah. To me, my question is, you watched the game. I, I didn't get to see this game. Case Keenum throws the ball 44 times. You're up 20-7. to seven. Like, And Darius Geis is here with 10 carries, who, by the way, is banged up again now. Yep. Probably going to miss a good, a good oh, bit and, of time. And, I guess you knew and that Adrian we went. Peterson was a healthy scratch. Which Sunday was... Blows my right, mind. Apparently, you're, you're caught going, everybody off. You're, you're, you're going to... A, I have a problem with naming guys to starter anyway. Let AP... Let him go out there, and if he's not working in the first quarter, then, yeah, you put guys in for the majority of the carries. But, man, you got a guy that, like, was tweeted out earlier. Um, you know, the, AP saved some guys' jobs last year, man. That, that, that guy won football games for this team. Listen, yeah. You can't put a, a, what amounts to a rookie on a surgically repaired knee and scratch AP. If you're going to scratch somebody, scratch Chris Thompson. And don't give me this crap that I just watched in Gruden's presser right before the show went live about we needed some guys on special teams. Shut up. Man, Look, you did not need a guy on special teams more than you needed Adrian Peterson yesterday. I, I, I'm perfectly fine if you want to take your offense and start moving it toward Darius guys. Yes. Adrian Peterson's oh, obviously. You know, 35 years right. old. If you want to start kind of easing that workload Geis' way, man, double thumbs up. That's probably the right thing to do. 
But you don't just sit him down and put him over there in street clothes because then you wind up with this happening where all of a sudden if he can't get going and he's clearly a little banged up, now you've got nothing. Listen, You have no running listen, back. you got it's Morgan Moses am- coming amazing. out. Morgan Moses, who's barely even been on this team, coming out and saying it was a slap in the face yes. to everybody in that yes. locker room. Um, you've got last year, remember, DJ, DJ Swearinger, before he was cut, coming out and saying, we run soft practices. <clears throat> I'm telling you, man, this coaching staff doesn't run the kind of practices you need. Now you've got, um, Lord, who was it? I, I can't even remember. A third player that I tweeted out. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm drawing a blank. Three different guys that – oh, I'm sorry. What I just said, a former player, Right. Yeah. Jackson comes out and says, I can tell you what's going on in that locker room. Those guys are not going to bring it in the second half. What else do you need to hear to know that – I mean, he's an offensive coordinator. He's an – that's it. That's it. This feels familiar, doesn't it? Does it remind you of a, the conversation we had last week about a college team? It, well, it, they're clones it, of each other, well, man. It reminds me of the same conversation we've had about Jay Gruden for like three years now. Yeah, and, and it's I mean, the same it's just, thing. you're going to have to go get an up-and-comer, right? Get a coordinator, get an offensive guy, get somebody with some ideas and go because you got a, you got a young quarterback. The last thing he needs is to waste a full year under this guy's tutelage and then have to hit reset next year because I think we both know this is it. Uh, yeah, he's Bruce not, he's gone, he's not coming back next year. He's not year. coming back next year. So if you know that, why would you flush – Dwayne Haskins rookie year because that's what's going to happen. And how many quarterbacks have we seen in this situation and they pay for it for the rest of their career. They don't get off to a meaningful start. Well, you guys had Jason Campbell. I remember years ago you guys had Jason Campbell and I always thought this guy would be a pretty good quarterback. Well, Joe Gibbs drafted him in the first round. Yeah, I, I always thought that Campbell would have been a pretty good NFL quarterback had he not gone through like seven offensive coordinators in seven years. And we've talked about there's guys all over the league like that. Yes. All over the league like that. That you don't know what could have been. If it starts uh, if it starts going sideways as a team, but Case Keenum remains Mm-mm. competent as quarterback. Case Keenum you, knows what his job well, is. Well, but I'm saying if things start going sideways on a season level, but Case Keenum is doing his part. Again, kind of like Dak Prescott. Maybe not necessarily to this level, but a more than serviceable quarterback. And a situation where we both agree there's going to be a different coaching staff next year. Does Washington even bother putting Haskins in there? Or do I, they just go, listen, we're just going to punt on this? I, I think that. Because I think with New York and Daniel Jones, he's going to have continuity into next year. That same group is going to be there. Well, I mean, I, I guess who, who are you asking me who's making that decision? And you're, who's deciding to put him in or not put him in? Is it Jay Gruden? Jay Gruden's trying to save his job. That's yeah. why this started to begin with. That's why Haskins isn't playing. Well, I told you that from the beginning. Well, I, I, and just I, because you thought that if you were trying to save your job, you would have shown what you could do with Haskins. Yeah, clearly, I, I, yeah that's I was clearly wrong. That's not, not gonna what happen. he thought. Yeah, well, that's, 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 that's clearly not what he thought. I don't think that short of a, a serious turn, I don't think that's going to happen. So I, 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 don't I, I don't think I don't think that may not that might not even necessarily be Gruden's call. I think that might come from somebody above him. Well, I think we all know where everything comes from in both of our franchises, right? But Bruce. But, well, I'd go higher than that. No, uh, I, I mean, and and you you think Dan's calling roster shots I, like that? I think he calls who's the starting quarterback is if he wants to. I definitely think he's the kind of guy that would intervene. He did that one time, and it worked out about as badly as it could possibly work but out. But I, I don't what, think he would do that. Let me tell you what it frustrates me so much, though. You now we talked about you know two years ago when Scott McLuhan was gone. Right? We said this draft's going to be a disaster. It was not. It was not. Yeah. This past season, again, Redskins get B plus, A minus from just about everybody. This is a this is a team with some young talent, and there there's some there is a future here. And I'm I'm tired of watching it wasted on this unimaginative play calling, and I'm tired of hearing people throw the defense under the bus because I suspect what happened in New York yesterday is, and I don't mean to take anything away from you guys. I'm really not trying to, but you know how football works, man. When your defense knows that your offense can't do anything, 
They're not going to go out there and play hard. They're just not, especially in the second half. And I think our guys just were like, man, here we go. Here we go. I I, I don't know. Mm. But I think Jonathan Allen, I mean, once the Eagles could run the ball, yeah, we were in trouble. Katie bar the door. Because when he was at nose tackle, they were not running the ball. But anyway, that that's my take, man. And, and the reason I want him gone and I want him gone now is because I want to save this kid's rookie year. I, I want him to at least not be exposed to the toxic mentality somebody get, of – Somebody get play. Jay Gruden a contract extension. Oh. Somebody get Jay an extension. I want Jay Get those Gruden. words out of your mouth. And, and Jay Gruden and Brad Brennell, like they're the same person. I hope they stay at their respective jobs forever. How about those as Panthers? Sandlot. Forever. How about those Panthers? What about them? I, what about the Panthers? I thought they hung in there better than I expected, but I did not think that they looked all that competitive doing it. Here's my oh. takeaway from the Panthers. You mean to tell you, like, it's Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey yep. is their entire offense. And it, I know he gained some weight, man, but is this kid really going to get hit 30 times a game for the rest of the season? I mean, it, because can you imagine what they would look like without him? They would look like you guys. I don't think they would have had 480 yards of offense without Christian McCaffrey. No, I, look, I, this, was, this seemed like a weird game to me. I, you watch it, and I never felt like – it felt to me like Carol, or the Rams held Carolina at arm's length all day long. It well, might just for one quarter, you know, one small uh, time in the second half where Carolina forced a turnover and had the ball with a chance to tie or take the lead. And they, I think they went three and out punted. Like, oh, and and, let's and the Rams say, answered with a touchdown. Other than that one window of time, like I never thought Carolina was in danger of winning the game. And I agree. And what I wanted to say is – and this was an L.A. Rams team that came across the country to play a 1 o'clock a kickoff. 1 o'clock game. And were clearly not playing very well. No. No. I mean, Jared Goff was completely off all day. They never really established a consistent running game. They barely used Gurley, which is a whole different issue. Um, and And to still come on the road and beat the Panthers at home on opening day, man, I mm. – so my question with Carolina, they tried to downplay it after the game. And to me, when you make it a point to say, well, no, this wasn't the problem, then maybe there's a little more to it than that. Uh, Cam's shoulder. I mean, I guess this is going to be a thing again this year. Newton did not look on at all. Uh, look at his numbers. Uh, 239 passing yards, no touchdowns, had a pick. But here's the big one. Negative two rushing yards. Yeah, three carries for negative. Like that's what he. That's what made him different from everybody else. That was his superpower. And what have? And if you take that away, then I'm not sure who Cam Newton is. Well, what has? I mean, I'm sorry, man. What has every NFL analysis been, including mine, including yours, about Cam Newton? That man, you get older, your legs fade. And you had better learn to stand in the pocket and deal the football. And I'm telling you, look, I love I love North Turner's play calling, but man, this entire offense is Christian McCaffrey. They have no one else doing anything. And I just, I really, man, I don't see him making it through a 16 game schedule the way he got pounded yesterday. Yeah, look, I you. Look at the stats. I mean, Jerry Goff, you said it. He was off all day. Uh, he had under 200 yards throwing, and their quarterback ratings were pretty much in the same ballpark. Right. I, look, I just – I don't know. Like I said, and, to and me, the, the running Panthers, is what made him different. If the you Panthers take that away – had that blocked punt, right, that turned into a touchdown. And, yes, that's part of the game, but it really skewed this score. Yeah. This game was not as close as that score looked. No. Uh, if just like the Redskins – that game was not as close as this score. Uh, if you're the Panthers and the Cowboys, and you, the game was actually super close. The really, score is a total really? lie. Because I'm, I'm the score pretty was sure a total that uh, that was taken Giants care of. Giants had so many They had so many chances to win that game. Uh, if you're looking for a bright spot for Carolina, we're going to we're gonna punt on the Christian McCaffrey thing. That's a given. DJ Moore had a nice day. He had seven grabs on ten targets, 76 yards. Maybe more turns into – And BG's awesome team says, thank you, DJ Moore. Why don't you come up with a better name than that? I didn't name it that. I know. That's like the computer-generated name well, it gives like you. you didn't like Swamp Donkey. 
I didn't know what that was. I don't either. I just like Gosh. saying it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, look, DJ no, that's Moore. That's what they used to call the coach down in Florida, was his name? McElwain. Oh. He used to say he looked like a swamp donkey because he had those big yellow teeth. <laughs> call him Shark something, but this is a family show. That's a different guy. That's a different one. But uh, Moore, DJ Moore, a guy that was a first-round pick. A lot of folks had some, some high expectations for him last year. Rookie receivers don't generally live up to that kind of right, hype right, that first right. year. The yeah. second year is when they take that big jump. Maybe more is, is finally, they finally found a receiver for Cam Newton. Now, whether or not he can get the ball to him down the field as the season progresses will be a different story. I, I mean, I saw, I, I was just watching them through the red zone, so I, ha, I was at the mercy. I was mostly watching the Bills and, and the Jets, but I, multiple places, especially on the sideline routes where Cam's got a guy wide open and the ball hits the ground five yards in front of him and it happens over and over again. Yeah. It right. has for a couple of years now. So, uh, speaking of the Panthers, they lead off our picks list for this week. Last week, I go six and three. Uh, we got nine games we were credited for with the, with the uh, Panthers and Rams push there. BG a woeful three and six. Oh, well. So, uh, I guess the uh, Tan Man takes the season series now. Uh, I don't see myself relinquishing that insurmountable lead, but we'll continue to play anyway. Yay. The Three-game lead. You, you're that confident. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Thursday night, a quick turnaround for the Carolina Panthers. They will be uh, hosting Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay hung in there for a little while this weekend. Uh, the Panthers, not a great again, not a great game against the Rams, but they are getting seven points in this one. A whole touchdown for Carolina, BG. Hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and, and say that the Panthers win it by seven. I, I, I think they bounce back a little bit, and I don't think Tampa Bay is very good. So you're taking the Panthers, you're giving the points. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, like you said earlier, if you can get a half a point with a lot of these spreads, either way, I feel a lot better about it. They need to be point five, really. I mean, yeah. I, I know we can't add that. It's a little because because you. Well, look, you, it, it probably will be by game time, but this is what it is. It, it would help though with the over under as far as not ended up with what we ended up with the Rams yeah. last week. Um, no, I agree. I, I look. I just don't think the Bucks are that good. I don't either. I don't think the Bucks are that good. I think Carolina maybe kicks a late field goal or something. They cover that seven point spread. Uh, Vikings at the Packers. And we do think the Panthers are going to win that game. That's what I mean. They're, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Vikings at Packers. The Packers are giving two and a half points in this one. Uh, my division pick against your division pick for the NFC North. Tell me the spread on that again. Uh, Green Bay minus two and a half. So Minnesota is getting two and a half points. I'm going to take the Vikings, man. And look, Dalvin Cook, you know, he hasn't been healthy a ton. When he's been healthy, he's been pretty good, and yeah. yesterday he was really good. And I think if he's really good, this Minnesota offense has another level they can reach. Because I'm taking keep, Minnesota. It keeps them from having to have the turnover machine. Kirk Cousins throw the football in the red zone. The one time they drop back in a 10-yard situation yesterday, he gets sat, fumbles the ball. Yep. Um, that being said, uh, I, I'll take Green Bay. All right. Uh, let's see. We'll save that one for last. So we'll go Saints at the Rams, a rematch of last year's NFC title game. This year, out in L.A., the Rams are minus three on this one. Ooh. We'll get our first look at New Orleans. We haven't seen New Orleans yet. They play tonight. They play we haven't tonight. seen the Saints yet. We just saw the Rams. But we know what they're going to look like in the dome. We know what they're That's gonna, not what we're talking about. They're on the road in L.A., BG. Who you got? I'm going to go with the Rams. I think the Rams bounce back and play a lot better football next week than they did this week. See, this is a tough one because, again, it's I, tough. I'm not sure. There will be plenty of points. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what the Saints exactly are going to look like. I feel like the Rams I, will be able to establish a running game. I don't feel like the Saints will be able to. See, I – Toward the end of last season, we talked about it. And, you know, Drew Brees is knocking on the door to 40. And toward the end of last season, we saw him kind, kind of decline. I think for the first time in years, he had under 4,000 yards on the season. He yep. used to be 5,000, oh, yeah. take it to the bank every year. Um, early on in the season, give me the Saints. I don't know why. I just have a feeling. I think they're going to start off. and I, 
early on in the season, I think they're going to be the Saints. If this game was played week 14, I think you might have a different story. But I wasn't that impressed with the Rams Sunday. So give me New Orleans. Uh, the Sunday night game, Eagles at the Falcons. This one basically a pick em. Philadelphia did not look good for a half uh, yesterday. The Falcons really didn't look good at all, at all yesterday. Uh, Atlanta getting a point in this one. Uh, at home, give me the Eagles, man. The I, Eagles. One week, I, I was high on the Falcons. I felt like the South was kind of a, a toss-up, and the Falcons could be as good as anybody. I again, too. But I just think, I think that the Eagles might have – I don't know, man. Doug Peterson, he, he might be the second-best coach in the NFL right now. Behind who? Oh, come on. Jay Gruden? Come on. What? I'm just asking a legitimate question. You are not, and I will not – Stoop to your level and respond. Well, see, look, I mean, we have the show. You know, part of the show is this better back and forth. I'm just saying, I'm asking questions. Wrong, Gruden. John Gruden is clearly the best coach in the NFL right now. Continue. Huh. Well, Antonio hey, Brown. You ask a stupid question. I didn't ask a stupid question. I asked a oh, legitimate I asked a legitimate question. You did. I thought you would say Jason Garrett. Did you? I did. He's my favorite coach. I love it. Wow. Well, yeah, unfortunately, he's Jerry Jones' favorite coach, too, and that's why we're in this mess. Uh, so that takes us to the marquee matchup of the week. Hardly. The one in lights. This is the big kahuna, boys and girls. The, the spread, Cowboys spread seven. at the Redskins. The Redskins are getting five. Five points. They're getting five. Give me the Cowboys. You're not going to take your boys. No. Why? Are you trying to make up ground? No, because I don't think well, exactly. I'm not. This is not a fan question. I'm trying to win a competition here. Uh, no, give me the Cowboys. Yeah. This is the easiest game on the. Uh, this is the easiest game I on the table. I don't know take. what that line is. That's kind of laughable. I, well, I think by the you know, by the end of the week, I would be a little surprised if this wasn't over a touchdown. Yeah. But uh, right now, it's at five. When we lock the when and we lock the line like Jonathan in, Jonathan Allen might not even play. This guy's not going to play. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, Cowboys all day long in that one. Uh, 135 in the books, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you tuning in. You can email the show. Uh, give us your take. How would you think the Cowboys look? Did they look like Super Bowl contenders? Uh, what about the Redskins? Are they going to get it turned around under Jay Gruden's tutelage, his expert Fire leadership? Jay Gruden. <laughs> you can also email Hashtag. your picks in uh, at CarolinaBorderWar at gmail.com. Whichever one of the uh, media platforms you'd like to listen to the show on, uh, review us. Give us a review. Subscribe to the show. I'm sure we'll pop right up whenever you load it up. Uh, anything else to add before we take a quick break and get on to number 136, my friend? I'd like to fire Bruce Allen while I'm at it. No, Bruce Allen and, and Jay Gruden. And I would Gruden. like to fire Dan Snyder. You cannot fire everyone. Bruce Allen, Jay Gruden, Adam Schefter, breaking news. Ten-year contract extensions oh, for both of those guys. Dude, shut up. Oh man, what Don't a even joke what a great day to be a Dallas Cowboy fan.